So you just beat God of War Ragnarok and you're sitting there wondering, hmm, I really enjoyed the game. I mean, I, I did. The story was good. The, the characters were also good. The pacing, the music, the scenes, the combat. But why do I have this strange feeling? What the f*** is missing from it? When I finished God of War Ragnarok, I had the exact same strange feeling. I know that there was something wrong with its story, but I couldn't exactly pinpoint what. So I slept on it, woke up the next day, still was confused as sh**. So I slept some more, and then I finally had a breakthrough. And it comes down to three key moments in the game. These three very important moments in the game are, in my opinion, why the story feels a little strange, disappointing, and even downright insane at times. So, in the somewhat earlier stages of the game, you have an encounter with Thor and Odin, something that was teased a lot, even in the first game, and then some more for years, and clearly it is meant to be one of the peaks of the story. But here's what I have an issue with. How about peace? How does peace strike the esteemed, retired god of war? How about we just don't kill each other? How about you stay home, kick up your feet, seek no quarrel with me, and I'll have none with you. Of course, it means that that one, that one has to stop his search for tear. Yeah, we know what you've been up to. Stop it. Tears old ways are dead. He is dead. You understand? And then that's it. Then we're square. Shit, I'll even sweeten the deal. I'll let you keep the prisoner that I know you stole. All right. Here's a deal I know you can trust. I'll settle your debt with my ex. Keep Freya off your back. Keep your boy safe. That's really all you want, isn't it? So what do you say? What? Why did Kratos just say no? no? I mean, sure, at this point he probably heard a shit ton of stories from Mimir about how Odin's a lying sack of potatoes and this offer's probably bullshit, but it kind of wasn't? He actually did keep the peace for as long as he could. But okay, let's say Kratos deeply distrusts Odin, which he should. Even at face value, it would have been advantageous for him to shake hands with Odin and then try to figure out what to do next. And then, and only then... Can you add some protein and blend? We expect him to say no, sure, but there's no good reason for him to do so, even just for the sake of buying some time. They still would have probably looked for Tyr, but this doesn't change anything. In the first game in comparison, Kratos is much smarter and wiser, though still troubled in making mistakes along the way, but those mistakes were mostly, if not exclusively, about parenting. Definitely not when it came to dealing with actual danger and threats. He showed incredible self-control and honest to God, that's a pun, diplomacy. When he could. To put things in a better perspective, here's a cutscene from the first game and Kratos' first encounter with Baldur. be bigger but you're definitely the one long way from home aren't you what do you want oh you already know the answer to that whatever it is you seek I do not have it you should move on <laughs> and here I thought your kind was supposed to be so enlightened so much better than us, so much smarter. And yet you hide out here in the woods like a coward. You do not want this fight. Oh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I do. 
Can you identify the person slash god entity being unreasonable and irrational? Leave my home. You are going to have to kill me for that to happen. Correct, it's definitely not this guy. Now let's go back to God of War. Ragnarok can do the same exercise. Can you identify the person? Okay, well, you get my point. What makes it worse is that Kratos knows his son is going to be involved in Ragnarok in some capacity, which makes this situation all the more delicate. Additionally, at this point in the story, he has no idea that Odin just really wanted a chat with Loco to help him out with the mask back in Asgard. Oh, the mask, the King mask, oh, we're gonna get to that. Anyway, this is a story-defining moment, and it's underwhelming and lackluster. You don't understand why he said no, and finishing the game doesn't reveal any answers either. If you aren't convinced of a character's thoughts, intentions, you are not going to find the story convincing either. Quick shout out to Libra Office that tried to change the word Kratos to Vibratos every time I wrote it down in the script. The biggest reason why I'm thinking about all this is because of how different the first game was. I mean, it was very simple and to the point. That was its charm. The real journey was Kratos and Atreus' relationship. All the monsters, creatures, and obstacles were kind of a grand analogy of what it's like in the real world, with real people and real relationships. After all those years of slaying everything in his way, Kratos finally becomes vulnerable. His movements become slower as he ages. He becomes more passive, less aggressive. But the most important of all is that he now has someone else to care about besides himself, possibly even more than himself. Which brings us neatly to the second issue and closer to the ending of the game. And here it is. Why the f didn't Kratos die? I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I don't want to see my boy Vibratos gone, but... His death was teased since the last game, and this time around, it was teased even more. All right then, well, what's the problem? He didn't die, so f***ing what? One of the most commonly used techniques in storytelling is something called tension. The way it works is quite simple. You add more tension and pressure gradually until some dramatic moment I call release. However, a very important rule to remember is that if you want that to occur effectively, your release point has to hit as hard as the sum of all those little moments combined. Now what Ragnarok did with Kratos' death was almost exactly the same. It gradually built up the tension, telling you that he was gonna die, just teasing and teasing and teasing and then BOOM! But he didn't die. Now the problem isn't that he didn't die, no, 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 no. The problem is that when you do realize he survived, it's not a heart-hitting moment at all. Not even as hard as the ending of the first game, what the f***? I mean, you can't help but feel a little cheated. The answer to the question, how did he survive, isn't convincing enough. You suddenly realize that all of that tension and worrying was just for nothing. This whole thing could have even worked better as a twist, but it wasn't even a twist at all. It was just a build up in one direction, and then some more build up in the other direction mid game telling you that, oh, he wasn't going to die, and ending the thing with no good release. When death arrived, he asked why the old man had called for him. Seeing death before him caused the old man to reconsider his request. After a moment, he asked that death help him lift the logs onto his back so that he may continue on his journey. He wasn't ready to die. He wished to keep living. By contrast, when Kratos finally calls his son, um, son in the first game, it's a massive resolution, a, a real one. The entire journey was for this moment, and arguably one of the most memorable moments of gaming in the past decade. They tried so hard to humanize Kratos, convincing you that he is not as invulnerable as you think. And in Ragnarok, they sort of killed that part. I mean, not entirely, but even in his first fight with Baldur, you can visibly see him struggling physically and mentally. But in the second game, facing Odin, Thor, Heimdall, Freya, and this thing, that thing, and his son running away? Nah, just another day at work. A prime example of having all the right elements, but just not putting them together. As Brock put it perfectly, This ain't right. All the pieces ain't welding together, true. You'll never shut up! 
The third section, if you will, is actually a little bit more complicated than the previous two. And this partially is about that Mask of Odin, which supposedly reveals all the answers. Odin wants to prevent Ragnarok, and he's found a way to potentially do so using a mask and the kind of portal. He, of course, for the sake of the story, needs Loki's help to translate the writing and collect all the pieces of the mask. This part of the game is actually quite intriguing because it makes you believe that, hey, Maybe there's some more to it. Maybe there's a win-win situation. Or at the very least, more win for us if we decide to kill Odin and keep the mask. Because this portal is as old as the universe, so maybe it's worth investigating? One objection to using the mask is Kratos saying, This mask, the easy answers that it promises. I know this. Shortcuts always have a price. Which, I mean, it could be the case, but... <laughs> Why did you do that? Why? It doesn't make any f***ing sense. The only possible explanation I could think of was that by not breaking the mask, the prophecy in which Kratos gets killed comes true. And Atreus, of course, doesn't want his dad to get killed, so he breaks the mask. But see, even with that, the problem is you do actually get to visit Norns who decide fate. And they tell you that, hey man, we don't actually get to decide anything, we just know your choices because you're all very predictable. So your fate is kind of the sum of all your choices, playa. Great concept, right? Except it further complicates the plot by making you question every step. Am I making the right choices right now? The old Kratos would have probably said no to becoming a war general again. And now he says yes, that probably changes something. The old Vibratos would have probably also killed Thor, but we didn't. That definitely changed their fate. But what about the mask? No matter how you try to look at it, there's no good reason for Loki to break the mask, honestly. Maybe it would have been clearer if there was some dramatic moment where he needs to choose between saving the mask and saving his father. And by doing that, you would solve two f***ing issues at once. Answering the question why Kratos didn't die and why Atreus broke the mask. In any case, the story just doesn't give enough information. And this trend of not giving enough information kinda continues throughout the game. I was so excited about finally meeting Thor and Odin having no idea that Heimdall even f***ing existed in the game, but by the time I got to the final fight, I was thoroughly disappointed because I think that they were not really explored properly. I felt that I got to know them way better through Mimir's stories, to be honest. And the icing on the cake was that there were characters I completely didn't give a f about because there are just so many. Now, we do need to be fair and say that the story isn't a complete hot garbage, but there's just so much potential wasted. God of War 2018 truly revived the whole franchise and Ragnarok still took it one step forward and half a step back. With its amazing combat mechanics and Oscar-worthy acting, I can only wish that they had taken their time and focused a little more on what made the first game so amazing and charming. The uh, simplicity of it, the originality, and being straight to the point. Anyway, let me know what you think down in the comments. I am sure to get some hate comments <laughs> doing this video, but um, those are my thoughts. I thank you for watching, and... See you in the next one.